Welcome into another off-season bonus episode with Stone Cold Heroes. I'm Brandon Strange with Charlie Polillo and Josh Jordan. Follow them on X at Polillo and at Josh Jordan 975 and read their work on sportsmap.com. On today's episode, we're going to get into some way too early World Series predictions, the likelihood of trading either Fromber or Tucker, a fascinating X Factor in the Alex Bregman for Agency Watch, and Brian Cashman's latest loser comments from last week. Before we get started, click like on the video to show your support for the hometown guys in orange. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. We know there's still a bunch of you out there that are watching that haven't subscribed yet. We are so close to 25,000 subs. Uh, help us out there, please. Really do appreciate it. If you have subbed, be sure to click the bell for notifications so you know as soon as new bonus content drops. And if you're on the go, we're on all your favorite podcast apps like Apple and Spotify. Gents, as we're in the midst of the 2024 World Series, it's never too early for the gambling community to start betting on the 2025 World Series. As we record this, both DraftKings and FanDuel have Houston with the six best odds. Given the amount of question marks that surround this team right now, are you surprised to see them that high up on the board already? Not particularly. And as you alluded, the way too early odds given the transactional portion of the offseason hasn't even started yet and there's going to be significant turnover obviously the free agent market and the trade market i don't just mean the astros i mean across all of major league baseball you know juan soto leaves the yankees and they don't come up with suitable replacements i would imagine it shifts their odds some but having the astros in the sixth spot behind which teams the dodgers and the yankees the Braves, the Phillies, the Orioles, I think those are the five. That's all reasonable. They were all better teams than the Astros in 2024. And just as the Astros could make upgrades, so could those other teams. Uh, I think the most significant aspect of this uh, from an Astros fan standpoint, uh, it's the response to the, the Astros stink. It's all over. The air is down the toilet. They're going to be terrible now. Tear it down. Yes, just like those who said in mid-May, late May, that they should tear it down then. Uh, the Astros still have a nucleus. They're no longer a superpower, but they're not 98-pound weaklings either. Yeah, I'm cool with these. It's it's all the usual suspects with these odds. They're in front of the Astros. It's n not all that surprising. And, you know, outside of Bregman, he's the question mark. But for the most part, the Astros are going to have almost everybody back. And, and Verlander, we know, didn't do a whole lot. So... If they don't make any moves and they kind of just stay status quo, I, I don't see how they won't compete for the AL West. And, you know, because even Seattle and the Rangers have worse World Series odds than the Astros do right now for for good reason. So it's that deal with baseball where you get into the playoffs and then anything can happen. You know, obviously, we don't know what they're going to do in free agency this offseason. Off we also don't know what they could do on the trade market at the trade deadline next summer. So there's a lot of stuff up in the air. But the thought that, that they're over with and there's no chance the Astros are, are going to be back in it every year is, is just ridiculous. This team is they continue to show you that they're going to be in it. They have experience. They're talented. And. I don't know. I think I'd like to see Dana Brown. Maybe maybe he could do some things. Let's, you know, kind of let him loose. Let, let him try some stuff and see if he can find some creative ways to improve this team. Off one of the odds boards, the Astros at 12 to one tied with the New York Mets, who came pretty close to making the World Series. And again, get in the tournament is job one. Soft American League West. Astros at 12 to 1 to win the World Series. The Mariners and Rangers next at 25 to 1. The A's and Angels as a parlay, somewhere like 10 billion to 1. So uh, the Astros, subject to all that happens in the offseason, we'll see if the Mariners finally loosen the purse string some on, on offense. Uh, but the Astros, as present, the definite American League West favorite, but not by leaps and bounds, right? The Mariners were relatively close to them when all was said and done. But that the Astros are destitute and heading on the uh, the road to baseball hell for a few seasons, uh, hell no. I think, and I don't make odds, but I think part of this is based on legacy uh, and you know the historical performance over these past several years. There's still a confidence that Houston can uh, put a 
com competitive team on the field. Uh, Seattle and Texas, uh, Josh, as you mentioned, are the eighth and ninth best odds, depending on the book. Uh, Seattle's got that history of choking the division away. Uh, and I also believe factoring into this is the murmurs of Texas rolling back their payroll next season. That could also affect, uh, you know, Charlie mentioned the purse strings for Seattle, but the purse strings for C for Texas seem to be in question right now as well. So I think that's also going to factor into this. Um, just a quick reminder, if you're a Texans fan, the three of us do a Texans podcast called Texans on Tap. We're live after every game. If you missed uh, our breakdown of Colts Texans, you can find that over on our other YouTube channel, Sports Map Texans, or an audio form on all your favorite podcast apps. Just search Texans on Tap. We'll also be dropping a Texans Jet preview today and we'll be live reacting on YouTube after Thursday night's game as well. Um, so as as Houston looks to retool for 2025. They find themselves at this crossroads after years of dealing away prospects and attrition of talent via free agency. Dana Brown has said uh, that this offseason will require them to be creative and everything is on the table. Uh, lots of people are wondering whether that could mean dealing either Framber Valdez or Kyle Tucker, who enter their final year of team control. Both will require long term deals that Jim Crane usually has avoided. There are plenty of holes to fill on this team as well, and the farm system needs an infusion of talent uh, on top of all of that. So before I get to Charlie and Josh's thoughts on this, we want to know what you guys think as well, so leave your comments below. Charlie, do you think we'll see one of these guys traded this year? And if so, which one is more likely? Mm. I'm going to say that Fromber is more likely to be traded but that's not crossing that 38th parallel to say it's likely that he'll be traded. The premium that there is for starting pitching, we talked maybe a couple of weeks back about the Corbin Burns template, the Brewers trading their ace last offseason as he was entering his walk year. They got a nice price from the Orioles, and it turned out it didn't debilitate the Brewers, who won the National League Central again. Fromber will be 32 years old when his extension or his free agent contract starts in the 2026 season. I just don't see the Astros going five, six years with Framber Valdez at that age with his workload, which presuming a healthy 2024 will be four years of heavy work and throw in the largely crapola postseason track record. I don't think that's going to uh, encourage Jim Crane to go above and beyond to keep Framber Valdez. Of course, on the subject of postseason track records, you have Kyle Tucker, uh, you know, breaks heal. And when bones bind, they're supposed to be actually healthier than the, before they were broken. Um, but I don't see a Juan Soto type return coming for Kyle Tucker, who's an outstanding player when healthy, remove the postseason stain. Craig Biggio and Jeff Bagwell didn't stink just because their postseason track records were, well, let's say lackluster, right? It's the full body of work. Guys who help you get to the postseason are pretty important. Um, but if one is going to be dealt, I think there's a sour, sour -er taste, taste uh, in the mouth given Fromber's, uh, you know, when you're the starting pitcher, you're the most important man on the field that day. And that Fromber's had one good postseason in the last four years. And he'll be 32 when 2026 opening day hits. Kyle Tucker will be 28. Uh, I think it's sensible for Dana Brown to field offers on both. But if you trade Fromber, and no, you're not going to be paying him $25, $27 million per year, 2026 20, and forward. Can you then redistribute some of that money if you want to bring back Kikuchi at three years, $15 million, or funnel that money into pursuit of an outfielder with her third base if Alex Bregman is out of here? So uh, to make a longer story short, way too late, I know, if one is dealt, I'll guess it's Fromber. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. And you spoke about the money. I think the projections for his arbitration for Fromber is around 18 million bucks. So if they move him and then that gives them some extra money to play with, you know, we're seeing a lot of articles out here. I saw one connecting the Mets to Fromber. They're looking for pitching. Maybe that could be something that makes some sense there. I just, the Alex Bregman thing, I think it's more likely than not that he walks this year. I'm not saying it's a a great hunch or a great percentage. I just think it's probably more likely than not that they're not going to quite pay him what he's looking for. So if that is the case, getting rid of Kyle Tucker on top of Bregman walking out in free agency, 
th- that could really change your World Series odds in a negative direction with two of those bats leaving the lineup. Whereas I feel like by the end of the playoffs, I, I think Hunter Brown was the Astros' best pitcher. I, I think Fromber's kind of trending in the wrong direction. Now, over the course of regular seasons, we know how brilliant he can be, but this Astros team, it's, they're looking for production in the postseason, and Fromber does have a lot of innings on that arm. So if I had to pick one, I, I think Fromber would be the guy that, that they may part with. I'm in line with Chandler Rome on this because I think it's all about depth. They have depth at pitching, which makes Fromber a little more expendable. Uh, they do not have outfield depth. So trading away Kyle Tucker, would they? that would be really, really bad uh, unless – they're they find themselves sell, sellers at the trade deadline in which case all bets are off uh josh you mentioned alex bregman as we're waiting to see what alex bregman does in free agency an important x factor is his agent scott boris boris had what most considered to be a disastrous offseason last year with his clients cody bellinger jordan montgomery blake snell matt chapman all unable to secure that long-term deal that they were anticipating and instead settling for shorter deals jarley do you think that what we saw last year will in any way make scott boris adjust his uh, negotiating strategy maybe particularly when it comes to bregman who enters a thin and very top heavy free agency market boy it's a it's a good question does boris view this as his vengeance tour i'm going to get all my long-term contracts from soto on down this offseason he's typically very patient waiting out the market number of his guys didn't sign into march last year boris can reasonably say you know what with matt chapman i won right he signed the short-term deal with the opt-out and then got the gross overpay from the Giants that Boris will be trying to whack the Astros and all other suitors over the head relative to to Alex Bregman. You know, Boris uh, seems to have these mind meld abilities over certain franchises. I mean, there are rumblings that the Phillies are going to be in on Soto, right? Bryce Harper is now a full time first baseman, but making mega money and what they paid Aaron Nola and Zach Wheeler. But Boris has, sir, I don't want to say patsies. Right? The Phillies have been a really good team year in, year out now. But where Boris thinks that he can squeeze the most money, he seems to, over time, win more often than he loses. But what does the client say? Does Alex Bregman say, look, I'm either going to get nine, 10 generations worth of wealth or 11 or 12 generations worth of wealth? But I want to know early in the offseason so I can get settled in with my new franchise, um, where I'm going to relocate with my wife and young child. Uh, the lineup I'm going to fit in, my read on things. And as certain teams come off the board, yeah, maybe Boris can still find money, but maybe it's a less desirable place for Alex Bregman to go. I mean, the Tigers came out of nowhere this year. Are they willing to pay big for a third baseman? Alex Bregman, look forward to going to Detroit. Small crowds, crummy weather early in the season. Or does he just view it purely from the uh, pitcher's park for the most part? Um how does the player, and obviously where the Astros are concerned, uh, I agree. I think Bregman's a goner when all is said and done. But uh, Alex Bregman, as he surveys the field, right? And Seattle uh, is a logical place, but pitchers park. But does Bregman view it as a chance to stick it to the Astros if they would not keep me as a pillar the way that they did Altuve and they put him in the Springer Correa category? Arizona has a decision to make this week. Eugenio Suarez, who was phenomenal in the second half of the season, a one-year $15 million option. D-backs may well pick that up. Well, there goes one possible Bregman contender uh, off the board. You can overplay the hand. You know, Bregman, so many players are fine. Well, I just let my people take care of it. Really? Are you not a grown-up able to say, hey, this is where I want to go. Get it done, unless they're extremely lowballing it. And let's add, if the Yankees don't get the World Series back to Los Angeles, free agency starts by Monday. So does Boris strike early, be it with Bregman or any of his other clients? And is there more early substantial activity in this market than as you talked about, Brandon, a year ago? The thing I noticed with Boris, and we've talked about it on this channel, it seems to me he likes to use teams like the Astros is, oh, the Astros are interested. So that's why we want to we want these other teams to pay more because, oh, the Astros are going to swoop in and take my client. So the numbers really up here when Boris, the really the numbers down here, 
but he likes to make it seem I remember rumors in the Korea negotiations that it could have been something wild like like not just 300 million but 400 million for Korea I mean just just wild numbers up there so I think that's where Boris sometimes gets in trouble because he gets his client kind of buying into this number that is really not all that attainable and then when it comes around to signing contracts and that number's not there they were counting on then they're willing to wait a little longer because they believed what boris said their market value was so if that's the case and we saw what happened last year where a lot of guys were disappointed they did not get those big long-term deals that they thought they were going to get with boris will they go into this year thinking okay maybe i'm not going to wait so long maybe the first long-term deal that i find acceptable Maybe I should just take that before somebody else comes along that they may offer that deal to and they sign it. And then you're left going, oh, man, I, I lost my shot. Now all these teams are filling spots with other guys and I lost my opportunity to get that long term security contract that I want. So I think that like Charlie Mitch, I think the players that are working with Boris need to they need to be the ones kind of in charge of this. And if they see something they find acceptable go ahead and take it and don't press your luck because you might end up left out and then having to play, you know, bet on yourself for another season. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. There are two games kind of at play in free agency, musical chairs, right? You want to be in at a chair of your choice when that music stops and liars poker. I mean, Scott Boris, all the agents, they use national members of the media. Ball clubs aren't adverse to putting out information and misinformation as they think it suits them. Uh, but Boris is always going to be a very busy man. Soto's the headliner, but he has Bellinger and Snell back out there. He has Corbin Burns uh, and, and uh, of course, Alex Bregman of, of most prominent interest around here. The biggest loser, I think, of all of those was Jordan Montgomery coming off of winning World Series. He didn't get the deal that Boris thought he deserved. And then Montgomery, when he finally does sign and pitch, has a down year. And he was the one that was the most vocal about uh, Boris's failings of him over the offseason. And on the Soto sweepstakes, the latest rumblings are that even the Dodgers could be involved in, in signing Juan Soto, which... If that's the case, just fold up the league because, I mean, are you kidding me? They're they're going to be throwing an all, basically fueling an all star team out there. Um, look, my my captain obvious take here is that the biggest X factor, as you said, Charlie, is what does Alex Bregman want to do? Uh, you know, we saw with Altuve, Altuve wanted to be here. His agent Boris as well. They got that deal done in fairly short order. If Bregman wants to be back. He will be because Houston, you know, doesn't seem to have a lot of encouraging options at third, uh, nor the prospect equity to deal for a third baseman. Um, but I also wonder how much the Soto sweepstakes plays into it just as teams lose out. You know, they'll be looking for their plan B's and, and maybe Bregman is a suitable plan B uh, for some teams. Uh, perhaps it's only even one dart thrown at the projection board, but Jim Bowden the former Reds and the Nationals general manager. His guess for Bregman is seven years, $185 and, and a half million dollars. That's seven years at $26.5 million per season. I'm pretty confident in saying if he gets that, it will not be from the Houston Astros. Yeah, no, absolutely not. And smartly not. Right, exactly. Um, so finally, we, we saved this topic for last because we know how exhausted everyone is with the sign-stealing sign topic. Um, we know you're tired of hearing about it. The problem is Yankees GM Brian Cashman just can't keep Houston out of his mouth because he has to continue to make excuses for New York's postseason failures. Even getting to the World Series, the Houston Astros still li live rent free in his mind. Um, he made the he, he again just for back, I'm sure everyone by this point has heard the comments, but Cashman again attributed the Astros and sign stealing for the reason uh, for their such a long uh, absence in the World Series. After all this time, Charlie, is it is it just crazy that Cashman still continues to trot out these old tired excuses? And secondly, do you think this actually resonates with anyone? Uh, other than just the fringe fans on social media? No, because even if you fully accept that the Astros cheated in 2017 and their championship should be invalidated and then she shall be uh, drawn and quartered in a town square, Brian Cashman, that doesn't cover the subsequent 
six years. Now, the Yankees did finally get to the World Series in 2024, but the milk was spilled and dried and cleaned up years ago. Uh, I guess he'll only hold that grudge until he dies. There is irony in that the idea that Brian Cashman knows nothing about cheating is absurd. Yeah. Let's, first of all, we know all this stuff. The, the whole reason the Astros learned about the sign stealing came from Carlos Beltran, who came from the Yankees and said, you guys are way behind. So it was the Yankees' fault that he ended up bringing that to Houston in the first place. And then if we just put pure numbers to this, okay, if we don't know for sure, but if the Astros were cheating at home in 2017 in the playoffs against the Yankees, the Yankees lost that series. They scored three runs at Minute Maid in a seven-game series. Three runs. So I'm sorry. What, how does the sign stealing with the Astros knowing which pitch coming keep the Yankees from scoring more than three runs in all those games? I mean, in, in game one, Astros won two to one. Game two, Astros won two to one. And then when they come back to Houston for game six, Astros win seven to one. Game seven, Astros win four to nothing. So you lost because you couldn't hit the baseball. That's what the problem was. I mean, you can extend the argument that, well, if the cheating hadn't occurred, maybe the Yankees would have uh, had home field ad advantage in the, in the series. And But it's seven years ago now. You hadn't won one since. It obviously still eats away at you if the Yankees can't come from behind to get the Dodgers in this series. It will continue to eat away from him. We could also introduce the, uh, I guess, famous or notorious, depending on where you're looking at it, or completely ignored, depending on where you're looking at the Joe Girardi clip of basically, oh, yeah, here's what we did. And then he said, yeah, I probably shouldn't go any any farther than that. Um, uh, the Astros were guilty. It's over and done. They're not the only ones who've ever been guilty. Brian Cashman, it's the permanent record. It's not changing. The Astros won the World Series. You didn't. Yeah, and there is no asterisk. I'm sorry. I mean, you can you can say that there should be, but there isn't. Uh, and, and people can believe what they want. And obviously, Rob Manfred allowed Houston to be the scapegoat for what has been shown to be a league-wide issue. But the 22 championship was the ultimate vindication. And the Yankees got swept in that series. They didn't win a game. So what did sign stealing have to do with that? It wasn't Houston's fault that New York uh, didn't make the postseason in 2023. And if they go on to lose the World Series this year, that also has nothing to do with sign stealing. At least at least we don't think so. Um, I just hope for his sake and ours mostly that he can come up with some new material because we're frankly tired of talking about this topic. We've avoided talking about this. We didn't do a video when he made these comments. We're putting them on a back end of a weekly episode just because we just, there at this point it's without merit and it's tired. And I think the people who are the most tired of it are Yankees fans, quite frankly, they're tired of the excuses too. So good for them. They're in the world series. We'll see how this, you know, uh, plays out with them being down 0-2 in the series. That's going to be it for this episode of Stone Cold Shows. If you listen to a podcast on places like Apple or Spotify, please be sure to give us a five-star rating, if you would, please. That helps people find the podcast. Charlie, Josh, and I will join you next week. Uh, but you don't have to wait that long to get your Houston Sports Fix. All you have to do is subscribe to this channel, Sports Map Houston, and Sports Map Texans on YouTube. We'll have more content for you during the week, including a Texans Jet preview dropping today over on the Art of the Channel. Thanks for listening. Until next time. Ghost Rose.